Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. This is our Prospect 10, where we bring five additional books that is not seen on the Key Collector app. So let's go ahead and get started with number 15. At 15, we have Loki number four from 2019. Okay, so um, not only are all Loki books are hot, but this one um, is something to give good awareness about. This is a, a low-key t-shirt variant, I guess you can say. Not a lot of people know that there's a, a, another cover with Loki with the signature low-key uh, on his shirt. And uh, here it is on Loki number four. And a lot of people have been talking about recently just got, uh, let's say, canceled for violating uh, Disney IPR right. So basically a design, a t-shirt designer had this up on a site and it was just taken down and it made some pretty decent news. It's not only just that, but it's also a foodie variant, uh, not a variant, but a cover. Uh, as you can see, he's uh, Loki's carrying a, holding a, a pretzel and he, and he throws one up at Eichel. So that was kind of neat. And there's also the guts uh, where it's the first appearance of the unfather. And remember, this book was only done in 2019. When this book came out, there was a lot of people speculating like, oh, wow, well, who's going to be, what's going to happen to Thor in the future where he becomes the unfather? So we have uh, Donny Cates teasing Thor 6 second print as being important on Twitter. So it's yet to be seen what happens with Thor. And I think the unfather could be coming into play in the future in publication. At number 14, we have Tales to Astonish 91. So this is a pretty cool book. Um, it's part two of uh, the Abomination story arc. Uh, number 90, you have the first appearance of Abomination. 91 is the first first cover appearance of abomination it's a classic jack kirby cover it's dope that it's an mcu e199999 which made abomination look like the version of from e616 but not definitely not hasn't been given its due and it's time to bring it to the forefront to the comic community at number 13, we have a community pick, Thunderbolts, annual number one, volume two. This is a community pick from redo underscore ribbon, spelled R-I-B-B-U-N uh, on Instagram. So uh, thanks to him, please, please look him up. So the reason he picked this is because it was the first appearance of Wand and its director, Pandora Peters, in, in one book. It is their sole appearance. And by the way, Juan stands for the Wizardry Alchemy Necromancy Department. It's a magic defense division of S.H.I.E.L.D. that deals with supernatural threats, uh, even within the Avengers. And it's made up of various magic users. So this is a interesting play given all the uh, magic that we've seen so far in the MCU and with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness coming up. And I love that it's also a soul appearance because I think we've seen so many books in the MCU pluck things out of obs obs obscurity. I mean, I, just this past week on Loki, it was Lamentus, the, the uh, city or the planet. Um, so, you know, I could definitely see, you know, them taking this, uh, taking this out of obsc obscurity and, and making it uh, something that we see on screen. So this, I, I tried to find this on eBay. It's actually pretty scarce, but I, I can imagine it, it had a um, 21,000 or so print run. I'm sure you can find it for cover price in dollar bins. Um, so I uh, congratulations to redo underscore ribbon. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look for a couple of these at least. So uh, 
Once again, congratulations. For our number 12 book, we have Star Wars number 52. All right, so the Rogue Squadron film hired uh, a writer this week. Um, I don't think the writer, they've said who it is. Um, this book was originally discovered by Topher, and it's a retcon origin story of the Rogue Squadron. This is not the first Rogue Squadron. This is not the first mention of the Rogue Squadron. I'm not saying any of that. I am just pointing out that this is an origin story. There's multiple origin stories for teams and popular characters, but I'm just pointing this out because now this is a in canon Disney story, okay? So um, in the guts of this book, um, Luke Skywalker says that the Logue Squadron's call, call sign is named after Jen Erso. And it's a cool fact. Um, a lot of people want Star Wars books, obviously, and they're looking for new stuff. This is only $5. Um, there's not many Rogue One keys. So this is definitely something that collectors should be aware about. For our number 11 book, we have Animosity number one, the one in 10. So this is a pick from Andy, who does a lot of coverage on uh, independent book titles. So he asked me to cover this today. And I definitely remember when this book came out uh, when I was getting back into comics. But anyways, um, with Stray Dogs having uh, the success it has right now, this book comes to mind as being grossly undervalued. It's a great story that has already been optioned and is in a huge low price right now. It has a small print run, and then um, on top of that, this is a one in 10 variant. So probably not many copies out there. So happy hunting. And for the reason you're all here, our top 10. At number 10, we have Star Wars, Star Vader, number six, the second print. So this is a cool cover. It's uh, the first appearance and first cover appearance of Ochi Bastoon. He was a, uh, a Jedi assassin and uh, worked for uh, Palpatine during the, the Clone Wars, hunting down Jedi, if I'm not mistaken. And Phil, wasn't wasn't he the one that, that uh, was supposedly the killer of Ray's parents? Yeah, so he was the one that uh, kidnapped um, his, her parents and then he was the one that, yeah, he was the one that they see his 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 corpse um, in in that movie. So um, this character is great. Uh, definitely, um, when a lot of Star Wars collectors were coming in, they're like, they were all about this book. I'm pretty sure Steve had a lot of requests and you know for pre-orders to buy this book. Um, this is cool. Where the second print has his has his first cover appearance. And he's still on the ongoing series right now. Um, so there's definitely a lot of good uh, ceiling left for this character. Sure. And uh, hopefully maybe maybe we get to see him in an animated series too. By Dollar too. So shout out to Dollar. For our number nine book, we have Amazing Spider-Man number nine, the comic exposure color variant. People were debating whether store variant covers count and uh you know in plain and simple uh you have the first cover appearance of silk spider gwen and spider woman and um we wanted to highlight this book regardless of what the community thinks or the marketplace thinks okay so this is the first time that those three appear on a cover and then, however it is only a dress and there's only a sketch no virgins um, it was done by Comic Exposure, and in the guts, you have the second appearance of Spider-Gwen, which is a pretty big thing, seeing that, you know, this book has the potential to follow Edge of Spider-Verse 2. Man, I need to check if I have this in my collection. <laughs> At number eight, we have Astonishing X-Men number two, volume four, the one in ten variant. This is a cool um, Elizabeth Torque variant. The artwork is just phenomenal. The color she used for this book is 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 amazing. X Men is super hot right now, and uh, 
lot of lot of fans uh, look to for for rare variants. This would be one of them. I mean, these are are pretty hard to find. If you find them, like this, this is a book to get slab. This is just a, a fantastic cover. At number seven, we have Marvel Boy number one, Marvel Knights. I think this is the second time this has appeared in our top ten. Uh, this time, I believe it was TJ who nominated it, and it's still a fifteen to twenty-five dollar book uh, in very fine near mint raw. It's the first appearance of Novar Marvel Boy, uh, who could possibly show up in the Marvels. Uh, uh, I think I think TJ's guest was uh, played by Park Se Jun. But regardless, this character makes sense due to his ties to the Dark Avengers and Young Avengers, which are both up upcoming MCU projects. Probably, I remember back in January rereading Secret Invasion, um, and then also Young Avengers. He he was, and in Young Avengers, he his name was Protector, and he was a Kate Bishop love interest. Uh, he's also been in the guardians of the galaxy comics as a member. So, so beyond, uh, dark and young Avengers and, and, uh, secret invasion, there's multiple MCU plays here. You know, if, if one doesn't pan out, then there's probably another down the road. Uh, one other additional note, there is a dynamic forces variant, a completely different cover. It has a 4k print run. And uh, that can be found out there probably uh, not as easily, but uh, on eBay and et cetera. For our number six book, we have Punisher number 224. So with the ongoing uh, rumors about War Machine Punisher showing up in possibly in Armor Wars, um, this, is a, a uh, this is part of that story arc. Uh, this is strictly a cover by with War Machine holding the American flag and, you know, right in time for the 4th of July. It's a simple, iconic image that's connecting with collectors, uh, slowly cre creeping up in price, and wouldn't be surprised if this became a $100 book before long. Currently, its value is around $20 to $30. At our number five book, we have Venom number nine, the Philip Tan Unknown Comics exclusive variant. So this book has a trade dress and a virgin. Um, it's the first full appearance of Dylan Brock. Rich Taylor liked this book because for Dylan Brock, this iteration of Venom looks more similar to the one that bonds to Dylan than to Eddie. Uh, he feels like it's a, it's a cool cover and it's been uh, forgotten. Raw copies sell for $30 to $50. 9 8 sell under 100 80 shipped if people miss the boat on first dylan brock um you can get the full appearance here it's a good opportunity uh that rich says that you can get it for 45 percent less uh than cover a and 125 percent less for 9.8s and you have an opportunity to flip it once the al ewing venom arc starts so uh, next-gen character, Dylan is going to be going to many, many places in the future. Great pick. For our number four book, we have Immortal Hulk number two, fifth print, the one in 25, Alex Ross Virgin. This was another pick by Rich or Dalabin, as he's uh, better known. With, with Marvel, these do seem to be money grabs doing the, the ratios for late printings. On the other hand, that doesn't take away the fact that they'll be less easy to find in the wild and online long term. So I think for too long, it's it's been ignored that this is not only the first appearance of Dr. Fry, but people forget this is the first appearance of Del Fry, his son. And Del Fry is, is the one who's actually panned out to be a key character because he merged with Rick Jones into some monstrosity in the Immortal Hulk run. And now with Gamma uh, Flight 1 that came out this past week, 
we we see them as as one of the core team members and still conjoined in some freakish um, monstrosity. Uh, so you, you do get two appearances for the price of one. You know, eventually maybe we will see Dr. Fry as a, I think the big hope's been that he'll be a big Hulk villain uh, that hasn't quite come to fruition yet. Uh, another thing about this is that it's an Alex Ross cover and just like all of us, I mean, it, it, it's beautiful. And without the trade dress, you know, it's even more of a work of art. I, I love this Immortal Hulk run. I think it's going to be seen as as one of the key runs. But we do have K Kate's taking over Hulk soon, so there's also a chance that we will see him maybe capitalize that that nothing really has been done with Doctor Fry quite yet. So there's a lot there's there's room to grow on this. At our number three book, we have Tales of Suspense, number 62. All right. Shout out to Topher, uh, who has joined the team. So we're excited to have him aboard. You know, whenever you have like a Silver Age book, that could be an impact. And a lot of people don't know about, it's like, holy crap. You know, it's, it's almost mind-blowing, right? So here we have... Um, as CGG annotates, is the origin of the Mandarin, but it goes much, much more than that. Uh, you have the origin of the Ten Rings, okay, which was uh, which we just saw in action in the trailer for Shang Chi, and we also have the first appearance of Axon Carr. I apologize if I'm butchering the name, but this is the alien that had the Ten Rings, um, and what happened was that the Ten Rings powered his alien ship, which crashed into China. And um, that's where, uh, I guess, some the locals got scared and he got, and then he fell off a cliff and he hid in the cave and he passed away. Later on, uh, locals in China found out that the, the, the saw the dragon bones and that's where the legend <laughs> of the dragon came in, in Chinese history lore, which is kind of cool. Um, so I also was saying that the 10 rings powered the, the alien vessel, um, and, uh, you get a panel of the 10 rings and Mandarin and the Mandarin talking about this, the origin story of how we got the rings. Um, Topher also mentions that, Hey, you know, that dragon like character really looks like th this first appearance of Axon Carr. And it shouldn't be written off that it could be him in the movie. Um, I'm not sure if people have confirmed that it's Fing Fang Foom. Um, but hey, Topher's just laying it out there. Um, artifact MCU books um, have been collectible. Uh, look at Darkhold, right? That book went from a nothing burger book to now like instantly like a two, three hundred dollar book in high grade. Uh, you have the Infinity Gauntlet, of course. You know, that's always going to be there. So uh, depending on how these Ten Rings are portrayed and how if Shang-Chi gets these rings, maybe from his father or Mandarin, has a, a longer play in the MCU. Um, yeah, it, it could be very well have uh, a high, high ceiling for this book. So don't discount it. It's It's... Topher says is undervalued in all grades across the board, even high grade. This is only like a two hundred dollar book, so um, definitely a uh, big shout out to Topher on this one and this and this discovery. Welcome to the team, Topher. So for our number two book, we have Star Wars: Attack of the Clones, issue number one. All right, so um, we all, if you've been watching Bad Batch there was another reference to Django Fett. And there's been so many mentions of Django Fett, um, not just in the Bad Batch, but also in the Mandalorian. So it makes me think that, okay, Dave Filoni is setting this up. Like, he is going to show up at some point. There's a revelation in the Bad Batch that Omega has the same genetic DNA makeup as Django Fett. So Omega, Boba Fett are the only ones left that 
the Kaminoans can use to create more clones. And the novel Jango Fett is reincarnated. He is recloned and goes after Eileen Bell. Uh, so then you have that that could be set up. Uh, you can also have Jango Fett prior to Attack of the Clones. And for people who follow Star Wars, Joe knows this too. Star Wars, when they come out in series, like it's not always linear. And Filoni has mentioned it. It's not going to always be like, okay, this happens. And then, okay, then the next year this happens. No, like it, it all, there's always a time jump with Star Wars um, shows and movies. So um, this is the first appearance of Jango Fett in a comic book format. Um, Key Collector has pointed out that there's a prestige format that came out uh, a month or two before that. Collectors still want to get the comic book format. So here it is. It's the first appearance also of Hayden Christensen uh, on, a, on this photo cover. So I think it's a great play. Um, it reminds me a lot of the Cad Bane first appearance in, in Darth Maul 2. People thought that was going to go away once people found out about the, the, the prestige format of Tales from the Clone Wars, but it hasn't. That book has, has steadily been there, and then now it's on the Ascend with his uh, appearance in the Bad Batch. So um, look out for the newsstand. It's a good book. There's also uh, an art cover of this book. So there's two different plays. So um, I, I just think this is a just such a such a good buy for fifteen bucks. And for our number one book, we have Department of Truth number one, the Prison Variant. So Department of Truth number one, the Prison Variant comes to us courtesy of Mr. Longshort. Uh, a great pick. It's it's my favorite book currently out. It's the Eisner nominations recently came out. Department of Truth, I believe, had multiple nominations. And one trend that we've seen uh, with the Eisners is, is the books do gain in value and, and are good long-term plays that get made into other media. Of course, that's not every single one, but the Eisners are, are, are good temperature uh, check of the of of what's going to be successful memorable and potentially valuable uh this just captures the uh, is a the zeitgeist of our times and it appeals to people across the political and, and cultural spectrum whether you believe in conspiracy theories don't believe them or you're somewhere in the middle i think the department of truth has, has something for everyone and this character, the the um, uh, the red dressed woman, uh, she has become, I think, one of the two iconic characters. You could almost call them memes of of the Department of Truth, along with the Starface Man. She appears. We haven't been quite told what she's up to, but man, she's been on just about every retailer exclusive variant. And I was shocked um, when I was looking at this earlier today that this is still available. Uh, the first print, a Frizen cover, it's still available for $20. That just seems ridiculous. Uh, I know, you know, I'm, I'm famous for buying, uh, I'm hesitant to even buy books for $10, but uh, I like this book so much. Uh, if if some of you watched the uh, Tales from the Flipside Monday show a couple months back, I was on and I on a chair. I had the, the opportunity to bid on this cover in a foil from uh, Tinian's uh, website. It was like a seventy-five print run of the foil version of this, and I spent uh, over a thousand dollars. <laughs> on this one plus the the regular cover and foil and there are some other things thrown in but that that's how much i believe in it that's how much i just love the book and how much i believe in it i'll put my money where my mouth is uh great pick mr long short i want to thank everyone for watching our prospect 10 list continue submitting community submissions to any of us on the panel and we'll keep on putting them on the list and voting them 
voting on them. Thanks for watching. Spec alert, spec alert.